Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're going to be discussing slopes of lines. As we know, slope is the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change of any two points. There are a lot of different ways to represent slope. We often see it listed as the letter M. Of course, there's the word slope. It's also called rate of change. You can see it as delta Y over delta X. You can see it as change in Y over change in X. You can see it as rise over run. Or you can see it as Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. The last one is the traditional slope formula you'll see on your star chart. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 is listed as your slope formula. Next, we are going to identify different types of slopes. So pause the video and see if you can name these four slopes. I'm not looking for a number, I'm looking for the word of what each of these slopes would be called. Hopefully, most of you remembered at least the first two. This line has a positive slope because you're going up the hill. This line has a negative slope because you're going down the hill. A vertical line has an undefined slope, and a horizontal line has a zero slope. The undefined and the zero slope are the two hardest to remember, so we have a funny vux hoy that will help you remember which one is which. So first we have the vux. The V stands for vertical line, the U stands for undefined slope, and the X stands for an X equals equation. The hoy stands for horizontal line, zero slope, the O is the zero, and then Y is for Y equals equation. So if you remember Vux hoy, it will make determining undefined slope and zero slope easier. Now let's try finding slope from two different points, two negative four and six six. If you remember finding slope in algebra one, pause the video and try to find slope on your own. So the first thing I'm going to do is label my points x1, y1, and x2, y2, so I know what to plug in where in my equation. So we know that slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So m equals 6 minus negative 4 over 6 minus 2. We know that if we subtract a negative, that's the same thing as adding a positive. So I can change this to 6 plus 4 over 6 minus 2. So that would give me 10 over 4, and then I'm going to reduce that to 5 over 2. So the slope between these two points is 5 over 2. Now try this one on your own. Find the slope from 2, 3 to 2, 6. So again, I'm going to start by labeling my points x1, y1, and x2, y2. So using my slope formula, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that simplifies to 3 over 0. Now if you remember, we cannot divide by 0. So that means that this slope is undefined. We can compare the steepness of lines by looking at their slopes. The steeper slope is the slope with the greatest absolute value. Hopefully remember that absolute value means the positive value of whatever the number is. So the absolute value of 1 is 1 the absolute value of negative 1 is also 1. So whatever the number is, it has to be positive. Now let's take a look at these two examples. Which slope is the steepest? 2 thirds or 3? Well, if we look at what we just talked about, the steepest slope is the slope with the greatest absolute value. Well, both of these are positive, so they're already in their absolute value form. So then which number is the largest? That would be 3. So the line with slope 3 has the steepest slope. Now let's look at the next example, 1 fourth or negative 1 third. Well, negative 1 third is not an absolute value form. So if I take the absolute value of negative 1 third, then that would give me positive 1 third. Now I'm going to compare 1 fourth to 1 third. Well, we know that 1 fourth is 0.25 and one-third is 0.333 repeating. So which one would be larger? One-third. 
And so the line with the slope of negative one-third is steeper than the line with slope one-fourth. Now let's talk about slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where the m stands for the slope and b stands for the y-intercept. So that y-intercept point would be 0 comma b. Let's look at this example. What is the slope and y-intercept of line y equals 2 thirds x plus 6? Well, let's have a look. The slope is our m. It comes right before x. So then the slope in this case will be 2 thirds. And our y-intercept is b. And in this case, our b term is 6. So our y-intercept is at 0, 6. The parent function of a line is y equals x. If we think about slope-intercept form, that would mean that our parent function has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept at 0, 0. Now let's talk about standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. So in standard form, there are no fractions. A, B, and C must all be whole numbers. Also in standard form, X and, the X and Y terms are going to be on the left side of the equal sign, and the constants are going to be on the right side of the equal sign. If you're ever asked to find the slope and the Y-intercept of a standard form equation, all you need to do is solve for Y. This just means you're putting this equation in slope-intercept form. Let's look at this example. Find the slope and y-intercept of the line 3x plus 6y equals 12. So if I'm looking for the slope and the y-intercept of this line, then I need to solve for y and put my equation in slope-intercept form. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 3x from both sides of my equation, and that gives me 6y equals negative 3x plus 12. If I divide all of my pieces by 6, then my equation in slope-intercept form is y equals negative one-half x plus two. Now that I have it in slope-intercept form, it's really easy for me to identify that my slope is negative one-half and that my y-intercept is at zero, two. Now let's talk about identifying slope and y-intercept from a graph. The first step is finding the y-intercept. We know this is going to be where our line intersects the y-axis. So that, for us, is going to be this point right here. So our y-intercept is at 0, negative 3. Next, we need to find our slope. To find slope, we pick two points on the line. So I already have one, my y-intercept, and then here I see that my x-intercept very nicely hits a point. So I'm going to count my rise and then my run. So I will rise 1, 2, 3 and then I will run one, two. So rise three, run two. So my slope is three over two. So watch out if you have a positive or negative slope, since we know what positive and negative slope look like, then you just need to add the negative if necessary. And then also, depending on which points you pick, you may be able to reduce your fractions. So always reduce your slope fractions if necessary. Now let's try graphing a line in slope-intercept form. So the first step in graphing a line is to place the y-intercept. Well, if we look here in our equation, y equals 2 thirds x plus 2, 2 is our y-intercept. So I'm going to count up 1, 2, on our graph and place my point. And then the second step is to count the slope. So you start at your y-intercept and then count the rise and count the run. So if we look, our slope is 2 thirds, so we're going to rise 2, run 3. So I'm going to rise 1, 2, and I'm going to run 1, 2, 3. So here is my point. I can also do the reverse. I can go down 2 and then left 1, 2, 3. And that gives me three points on my line, so I can graph that and then make sure I put arrowheads on my ends. And then that is the line y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. 
Most times I do three points on my line so that way I have a very clear picture of what my line is going to look like. And that's everything I have for you. See you in class.